My name is Jerry Vasey, and the show is I Can't Write Right, right? And it's introducing various authors. Today I have Deborah Adams here, and Justina Fink is on the telephone, so because she's in Virginia, it's a little drive coming up here just for a show. Big question, did you start your story yet? And uh, what prompted you guys to write a nice book about tying shoes? Um, I'll give that question over to my sister. Hi, sister. What, pr Hi. what prompted you to start writing a book about Little Ducky Do? Uh, well, um, as I don't know, as you know, um, I have um, some house challenges, and I wanted to, which were very serious, and I've always, ever since I was little, wanted to write a story that made a difference, actually giving stuff confidence. And we didn't have a lot of that, very little of that, if any, when we, when me and my sister grew up. And, you know, there's a lot of families, but there's a lot of factors. And I wanted to write something that made a difference, that was encouraging, that um, just didn't say you can do it, but you can do it because someone believes in you. And so I wanted to, we wanted to make sure that that was a, that was the message. And it could be, you know, it could have a legacy and to, to have that change children's lives and not only children, but it also gave maybe the light bulb that goes off to adults and saying that maybe I need to say this to the kids and actually say that I believe in them and how, what a difference that can make. Yeah, I know, um, it's well over 70 years ago when I first had to learn to tie my shoe and uh, it sounds easy when you uh, get older but when you first start doing it and you're wondering why and you don't know whether you can or not uh, I was very challenged for self-confidence but it doesn't sound like you two are um, we're we're not now <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> as, as, it's been a lot of work yeah as children we Self-confidence wasn't instilled, um, so it's very important to us that we show other people how to encourage children um, to, to really believe in them and let them know that and just make them happy. Kids this, need to be happy. This will do that. Now, uh, when we talked before you came on the show, you were talking about what you had to do to get the um, illustration. I know that I didn't realize how important illustration was until yes. I looked at your book. Yeah, um, and, and we have uh, a great finishing um, illustrator. Uh, I do a few sketches, a couple storyboards, and we send those over to Indonesia. There's a lady there that we contacted through the web that um, does this incredible job of, of bringing Ducky to life. Um, but sometimes things get lost in translation. You were telling me that. I want to tell a story about the banana bite. Yes. Um, our, our second book is Can Little Ducky Ride His Bike? Um, so we were working on the cover and we explained to the, the illustrator that we wanted Ducky on a banana seat bike because that's what we call them in the 70s. It was a banana seat. Well, when the picture came back, it was absolutely gorgeous, but something was a little off. And we found um, that B Ducky was actually sitting on a banana. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a banana seat. It's a banana seat. So obviously they don't call that the bikes that in Indonesia. <laughs> now, what did you do with all that? Did you have to redo it or did you just? Um, we, she, she redid it for us, but we're keeping the original because we want to make it into a activity page, hide some more stuff. So, you know, it's, a, it's like Bob Ross says, you know, no mistakes, just happy accidents. There you go. <laughs> that sounds exactly. like a happy accident. I imagine there were a few laughs over that. Oh, it? yes, definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. Now you're talking about you're doing a series of books. This Correct. is the first one. Did you learn anything from the first one that uh, you'll use in the, in the next one? Any, anything that you say, okay, life is always an improvement on what 
used to happen. Right, and the next book will be a little bit longer. Um, we'll get someone to professionally edit it. <laughs> That's right, I understand I've met the editor myself personally yes, once. Yes. yes, Over breakfast. <laughs> over breakfast. Yeah. Um, but uh, our first run of books, um, there, there was an editing problem, but again, we turned it into a, a positive. And, and we've done a contest as to if the children can find the, mi there's two misspelled words, <clears throat> excuse me, not on purpose. Um, <laughs> if they can find them, they can enter a contest to become, uh, their name be used as the mouse that's in our Ducky series. Oh, wow. Yes, so. That sounds great. I know if, for people that are out there just thinking about writing, then there's, that's always a scare. You know, did I, yeah. if I said sight, did I mean sight or sight? Right. You know, and yes. did I spell it correctly? And uh, yeah. Uh, my editor is, is like you, is a member of the family. Yes. <laughs> and can't necessarily catch everything, but um, I know I talked to the last person I talked to very strongly recommended an actual editor, somebody right. that doesn't know anybody in there. Correct. That can be yes. brutally honest. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but the, your book did for, did really good for self editing. And yeah. were you self published or did you have a yes. publisher? Yes. No, we were self published, and we had a printer in New York, um, Studley Printing, that took care of the printing and the you know the, the um, setup of the book and. Um, because this was something that we really wanted to do for my sister, um, like she said, she hasn't been well, and this is something she always wanted to do, so we got stuff together, got some, a little bit of money saved, and we wanted to make it happen, and um, a publisher wasn't in the budget. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That but happens. I found out, yeah, found out it's not that hard to do, honestly. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. To be honest with you, it, some of the stuff that we found out uh, through the process of doing the first book, that we said, oh my gosh, I'm like, wow, not only we could do this, but other people could do, make, yes. you know, make something happen for themselves. Yeah. And not have it cost an arm and a leg or, you know, it's just, awesome how the world has opened up yeah i just think doing your research and checking oh, yeah. checking people out mm -hmm. you know yep. you definitely don't want to um spend a lot of money on anything if you if you don't have to um but to do your research find out how to self-publish um find different illustrators um editors you know what works for you may not work for everybody, you know, right. but, but knowledge, knowledge is power. Did you get a professional, dis professional person to do the distribution or are you doing it yourself? Um, yeah, we're, we're doing it ourselves. Okay. Yeah, we do different events, like I did a book signing and, and my sister's gone to um, a school down in Virginia. Uh, she just had a, a like an assembly with about a hundred children. Oh, yeah! And the school um, purchased some books for the the kids, and it. She's my sister's a beautiful seamstress, so she's working on prototypes and stuff oh. for for stuffed animals and everything. But you know, um, money is a factor. You know, it it is in everything, but we. I think we're going to really appreciate when it takes off because we've done a lot of hard work. Yeah, and uh, it's, it sounds it, you know. And for everybody else that I'm talking to that, okay, start your own story, you, it's very encouraging that, well, you're like little ducky do, you can do it. I, you, you can know, do it. You, you can do a, anything we believe in you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> sounds true. it. Absolutely. It's, it's very encouraging for me because... Uh, like I'm starting from nothing and, and trying to, of course, it's a, a larger book than this, but the same thing applies. Right. You've got a budget. Uh, one of the people I talked to uh, spent quite a bit of money producing a, a novel kind of professionally, and 
uh, they, their money came back to them. They didn't make a huge profit. Right. But it was their first book and they just about broke even. Right. And they had so much entertainment. Uh, I imagine the entertainment value of doing this for yourself, you know, it's oh, exciting. Yes. And we, we have had such fun. Um, we, we actually recorded the book with my son's voice. He was obviously making a voice, but it was so fun. We laughed and laughed and it, it just, this has been a, a, a the glue for the bond that my sister and I have always had. Oh. But this is this has strengthened that bond. You and know? the children are into the into it as well, so that glue Yeah, brings it everybody just in. brings everybody together, you know, and, yeah. and we're yeah. just yeah. It if nothing else, if it never sells, we we did it. We accomplished yeah. it and and everybody involved had a good time. Yeah, you talk about Christmas parties and, and Thanksgiving, there's all that much work in and you're, you're, you're doing it because you love it. You don't yes. expect to get your money back from Thanksgiving right. or Christmas. And uh, this sounds like the same sort of a thing. And yeah. it's something that anybody can do. If nothing else, like I always say, this makes a very good Christmas present for all your neighbors and friends yes. that they'll have forever. Yes. and and. Um, now there's a lot of baby um, showers that are book baby showers oh. where the, the parents want books. So there are a few children out there who um, have first edition Little Ducky Doos. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so very, very special, um, dear to our heart. Oh, no, no question. But I see you have, speaking of hearts, you have a heart brace yeah. on. Has that got a significance? Or? Um, it was actually given to me by my son. Oh. Yeah. He's just. Well, sons he, love their mommy. Yes, most definitely. I imagine he's proud of you writing a book, too. It, he is. He really is. And, and he's proud of his aunt because um, he knows what she's been through to get here. And yeah, yeah it's, it's really good. Yeah, it's, it, it takes courage just to get out of your shell and, and write something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not like, oh, yeah, I can do anything. It's like, oh, look what I'm trying to do, and I, got, I, got, I don't know what to do on the front page and right. what to say, and you probably, probably wrote it a hundred times before you found out <laughs> the one that you wanted to stick with, right? It, my sister did do a lot of writing um, and rewriting and, and even though it seems like a small book, you want to gear it to your audience, mm -hmm. you know, um, a novel is geared towards, an, you know, a young adult or an adult, but something like this, you, you have to gear it yeah. towards your audience and, and lots of expression and, and so on. So we, it took a while for her to be able to put into words what she was feeling, what she wanted Ducky to portray, you know? And, um, and I think along with this, each time she wrote, you can do it, I believe in you, it was a reaffirmation for herself. Yeah, you could, yeah she could believe and in herself. Yeah, for, for us, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and also I think uh, we also, which is great, you don't mind I'm chiming in, but, um, that we have coloring pages that we give. Uh, we've been giving out coloring pages like, um, I am a, a patient of the National Institute of Health, which oh. is a world-renowned hospital um, in Bethesda, Maryland. Well, they have a children's inn. There's a lot of kids from all over the world that have all kinds of different rare conditions. Whoa. And so what what we did, like I said, we had have, we have made up coloring pages to go with the book. Yeah. So I would be passing them out. So, and one of my, and also one of my friends, his sponsored children from different countries, um, like Africa and some of the, the third world countries. And so what she has done and then what I've done is we've given these coloring pages away. And so 
kids from different countries are or maybe might have a positive effect on them right with the just the coloring pages that we've done yeah because like um uh, they would be kind of like a black and white of some of the the images in the book mm -hmm. and some that we we created like for um valentine's day and stuff like that but they all have a message on them now you know. uh, do you do it in various languages or do you we haven't yet but you know that is an extremely good idea so some really of the people is. that yeah you're going to give it to know the language and can translate that's and, right that's right uh french spanish i think we should start with you know yeah. Um, yeah, because we're we're right close to Canada here, you know. Yep. That, yep. Jerry, yep, you exactly. are so bright. <laughs> well, <laughs> most bright bulbs burn out quick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, finding somebody that's bilingual in this county is is like trying to find water in a lake, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was taping something this weekend and uh, for people playing the violin and the first three talents were all done in French and the whole audience started singing along and I says, yep, this is Franklin County. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, that's awesome. It is. Uh, yeah, I, I read the book through. I, I like it. I like the fact that the person uh, telling little ducky do that you can do this actually let the child do it and yes. with, with a, as little amount of um, help as possible so that the child realizes I did it instead of right. mommy did it. Right. And I see so much now where people are doing everything for their family and then kids grow up and don't know what to do. Yeah, it's a busy, busy world. And we all have so many places to be and, and things to do and the kids have to get to school and and it's it's easier to tie their shoes and get them out the door or buy them that don't tie oh yeah <laughs> buy them ones that don't tie yeah. but yeah but we're not doing a service to our children that way right. you know yeah. um the the trying helps to build the confidence the completion reinst you know reinstates it it's um you can encourage your child and and show them how to do something but they really need to yeah. achieve it and accomplish it in order to feel like they've done. We always believed that the first job when the child could reach the sink was helping with the dishes, not yes. doing the dishes. It's the same thing like here, if you read this, uh, when a child is getting up in the morning, you take a couple of minutes out of your time to read it, well, then they're into Oh yeah, I can, if little Ducky Do can tie the shoe, I can as That's well. That's right, because he doesn't even have fingers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah I noticed time. that. Says, okay. <laughs> um, that's a little more difficult for him. Yes. But it actually, uh, it actually gave hints as to how to tie your shoe. Right. You know. Yes. And uh, and and it's it's ten minutes to spend with your child at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's a little bit of bonding, um, it, it and it gives you a little tool to oh, say, yeah. how do I go about instilling confidence in my child? Right. And believing in them is the most important thing. Yeah, because if you if you don't believe in your child, they aren't going to believe in themselves. Correct. You know, yeah. and if you're doing everything for them they will think you don't believe in them. Right, you know? they, they don't, that they're not capable. Yeah, and, and they are. Yeah. Um, I have an aunt that even cleaning their room, which is the worst thing you can ask for a child to do. Especially a teenager. <laughs> she, she would go in, they would go in with the child and they'd make a game out of cleaning the room and kids grew up fantastic yeah. and very self-confident. Yes. And I think this is a good start for anybody. Uh, and, and even, uh, even if you write little things for your for your kids to, mm -hmm. to help them out. Little instead, notes around the house. Yeah, little notes yeah. around the house. Writing, uh, I've always believed that writing and reading causes intelligence in children. Oh, darn. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's a rare thing nowadays. 
you know. Uh, everybody's on there typing away, their fingers, thumb yeah. falls off and that, but uh, writing something that, okay, this is how I feel, this is how I do something and that is so important and it's so overlooked. Yeah, and, and it's part of a social um, activity. You know, um, it's, it's kind of us talking to our audience. Yeah. You know, um, uh, social, with all the social networks and the, the cell phones and so on, people, they don't talk anymore. Right. You know? Um, you look, see two kids sitting next yeah. to each other doing yeah. this, and they're <laughs> looking over the other kid's shoulder to see what he's typing. Exactly. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> It is. It, it's. It, yeah, we're not doing. I, I mean, we we've come a long way with with uh, helping our planet and and saving a better planet for our children. But I think what we still need to work on is leaving better children for our planet. Sounds good. Now I got the I got the big five fingers, which means I got five minutes left. Oh, that went so fast. what? Oh yeah, it always is. Uh, so I'll let you two sort of wrap it up. Let me know. What, tell me anything you want the people out there watching this to, to know about about, especially about writing and doing something like this on their own and uh, making sure their children know how to do things. Yeah, sis. Are you, oh, I'm sorry. Do you have anything to add? Well, I just, it's just, you know, it's just leaving, having a legacy, knowing that there is going to be, like, it's in forever, especially when someone does a copyright, they do it and it's sent to the U.S. Copyright Office, that, that must, it gives a, a feeling of, wow, because the copy of the book or whatever they wrote is going to be there forever, which is which is just a really cool thought. Yeah. And you know, after all that hard work, you know it. Right. And, and for them also um, to do it also when it comes to do your hard work, do your due diligence. Um, there's a lot of things that you can find out on the web now and ways of doing things that even five or, or six years ago that you weren't able to do to make what you want to do as far as writing happen. There's so many resources and so many things you can do for yourself. That is just, it's so much better than it used to be. Yeah, and take it one step at a time. Don't yeah. look at the whole thing. Oh. You know, do it one step at a time. Um, definitely write notes, what you have to do, where you have to go, who you need to contact. Um, and also don't look at it as a whole yet until it's done because it will feel overwhelming. Yeah, yeah that's exactly, that's, that's absolutely right. You know. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Uh, maybe like start with a timeline or something that this has got to happen first. And... Right, exactly. You don't have to come up with all the detail the first time you sit down. Yeah, exactly. Make, make bullet points, you know. Okay, we got a couple minutes left, so. Uh... Uh, yeah, this is Jerry. I was just sitting here mesmerized by these two young ladies that uh, wrote this. It's, it's not a lot of pages, but there's a lot to it. And uh, I just would like to encourage anybody to uh, come talk with us about your uh, experiences with writing a book or just writing for your family and what you succeeded at and what you didn't succeed at, too, cause, because... Like you said, spelling mistake turned out to be a good thing. Yeah. You've had made a contest out of it. You can always uh, write, write eventually, but you don't always start out writing perfect. Right. It's, it's <laughs> progress. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, it's progress, not perfection, isn't it? Correct. That, that yes. Is. That's right. Yeah, oh, one so. one step at a time. So if you know of anybody that's an author that might do good coming in here. I'd appreciate uh, a call. Mm -hmm. Just call the station and say, hey, matter of fact, I just got one the other day where they, a person gave me a, a, an author to, to bring into the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, please do that and 
start a book or start a story. It's your great, 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 great grandchildren will appreciate it. Uh, it'll be, it's about as close to living forever as you can get, you know, um, that sort of thing. I, we're kind of running out of time, so I better wrap it up. This is Jerry Vasey, the show is I Can't Write Right, and I had Justina Fink and Deborah Adams on, and thank you guys very, very much. Thank you. And uh, maybe later on we'll get you back on the show again and tell me the experiences the next time you yeah, have something. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be yeah, great. Yeah, that would be yeah. wonderful. And you can do so anything. Excited. You can do anything. We all believe in you. Yep, okay. absolutely. Well, thank you very much, and that's a wrap. And uh, thank you very much for watching our show.